The World Health Organization has declared that sleeping sickness is a neglected tropical disease that should be eliminated as a public health problem by 2020. But for a disease that only affects people in the remotest parts of Africa, that is difficult to diagnose and that has had only one new treatment developed in 50 years, that's easier said than done. I'm Dr. Javed Abdemunem in the Democratic Republic of Congo, where one organization's commitment is proving that actions speak louder than words. Human African trypanosomiasis, or sleeping sickness, affects up to 30,000 people and is fatal if untreated. Blood-sucking tsetse flies spread a parasite called trypanosoma, whose ever-changing protein coat allows it to evade the body's immune system. Early symptoms are often ignored, sometimes for years. But once the parasites break into the central nervous system, they cause disrupted sleep patterns, brain damage, and eventually death. This is Bunia, in northeastern DRC. It was the scene of much fighting in 2003 during the Second Congo War. Now it's a base for one of the largest UN peacekeeping forces in Africa. From here, Médecins Sans Frontières launched their logistics. Of, of trees and nothing else. We're on our way out to the northwest of Provence Orientale, just one of six stops this chartered plane will make today, delivering staff and supplies to projects in the region. What I find so surprising is I can't imagine that people live out here and there are no roads in and no roads out. How do you know where your patients are? How do the patients get to the doctor? Is there any point in having a fixed hospital? It just, it's just mind-boggling. Welcome to Dingila. Thank you very much. We're here, huh? It's straight from one mode of transport to the next. I've joined MSF field coordinator Marie Claret on her way to visit a sleeping sickness mobile screening team. We're really going into the forest here, huh? Yes, it's quite remote where the mobile team is uh, living right now and uh, doing the, the screening. So that's the active screening we're going to the field. Exactly. exactly. I've also worked as a doctor for MSF before, three times in fact but I've never been anywhere this isolated. Five AM and no time to waste. For these guys, packing for a day trip takes on a whole new meaning. For the last half an hour, you've got at least 10 motorbikes here, full of equipment, charged and ready to go. I've yeah. already got a whole generator <laughs> and uh, a few table legs on here. That guy over there has packed about six table tops onto the motorbike. So in here is the centrifuge, and that's an electrical one, hence the generator on the back of that bike. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the cold chain. In there, you've got items that have to stay below four degrees, and in this atmosphere, that means you have to have an ice box. So it's like a picnic. C'est bon. Merci. 
Oh my god, look at this river. The guy with the megaphone, he's the chief of the village where we're going to okay. the screen today. He's also the sensitizer for MSF, so megaphone is actually MSF megaphone. Oh, I see. And he's been spreading the word that we're coming today. So the whole village actually, they'll listen to their chief. Yes. I mean, we're using boats here, there's no roads. No, and uh, actually the village is on an island, so oh, we really? couldn't go by, by <laughs> motorbike or car. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be cool. Huh? We're going to yeah. a village in an island two hours up this river. Yeah. Great, let's go. You first? No, please. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I fall in, is it? There are hippos on this river. No joke. Yeah. How much is the population of this entire river area, do you know? No, for now we don't have a clue how many people are living on Even the Department of Health, the Ministry of Health doesn't know. No, they are really, really, really remote uh, people. It's not even sometimes villages, it's just a few people living uh, on the banks of the river. I've never ever seen, like, logistics is logistics, but serious stuff, this. Yeah. Just to be clear about sleeping sickness and what it is, it's a neglected disease. So this is a, a term given by the World Health Authority through the WHO and through many other international groups. And these diseases are neglected because there have been no new technological advances, whether through diagnosis or treatment, for the last 50 years or more or less. But then you ask, why are they neglected? The cold light of the truth is they're neglected because poor people are affected by these diseases. Sleeping sickness affects people this isolated, people that don't have money. And Big Pharma will not develop a drug if they're not going to make money. That's the truth. So apart from the physical challenges, what are the other challenges? Well, convincing the population to come to the screening. First, they don't really know sleeping sickness. Even if they know the name, they don't really know the disease. Okay. And they don't know that it's fatal. Uh, oh. So they have to get tested to know if they're positive or not. And they get the treatment. And... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I think he's, the chief is using the uh, music to uh, let's, let them know that we're here. He's alive. Wow, merci beaucoup. Don't go to Well, they're ready, huh? They came. Waiting for us. Perfect. Bonjour. This is Nekpatolia, a fishing village in the middle of the River Uele. MSF first visited this village six months ago. They screened 168 people and found a sleeping sickness prevalence of 3.57%. Today, they hope to see an improvement. Syndrome choréique et même les syndromes hypertoniques de type parkinsonien. The film's explaining stage by stage what um, they're going to be going through now. But what I find even more interesting is that it's obviously a film from a colonial era, from when the Belgians were here or French were in Cameroon or elsewhere. And that, for me, that just goes to show exactly how much of a neglected disease this is. Take Mama.
that's what's going to be mixed with the blood. Here we go. Now you've got a, a drop of blood with the reagent. The agitator needs to do it for a full five minutes as a timer on. Even after three minutes already, these guys are so sensitive, they can already begin to see the beginnings of agglutination. You can see the sediment. There's a fine sort of sediment around the edge of the, the red dot, which means the test is positive. That doesn't mean they have sleeping sickness. This is only a screen. It's not specific. We, can, we know that there's some sort of infection going on. They'll need a blood test for the diagnosis. That'll be over here. We actually found some lymph nodes in Jean-Pierre's neck. For JP, that's a better way of testing. He's going to now go and do a lymph node puncture. Donc on y va. Nous pouvons y aller, d'accord. Merci. We're looking for the actual trypanosoma parasite. Il bouge. They make sure and check on each other's results at every stage. So in this case, both agreed. So the third technician, Alexi, did not need to do it. And it was a positive case, unfortunately, for Jean-Pierre. Jean-Pierre's now got to have a lumbar puncture to stage the disease. So we've got to get fluid from his spine, from his spinal column, so that we know at what stage the disease is, how severe it is. Bon. Attends, là, ici, on sent l'examen. Bon, on va comprendre ce qu'on fait ici. Tu comprends ce qu'on fait ici Il me dit qu'il y a un examen de quoi Un examen de quoi Il est en train de se faire. Le landmark, où est-ce que ce needle va It's going into the spinal column. It's going to collect liquid that bathes the brain in the whole spinal column. So you've got to go in between the bones of your lower back, which is why you ask the patient to bend over and hug their arms like this. That opens up the spaces between the vertebrae. Look at this needle, it looks big. But that's an ordinary size spinal needle. Straight in, that's gone in about three centimeters. When it gives, you know there's liquid. And right now, as you can see, there's clear liquid coming out. This is the liquid that bathes your brain and all your nerves. A few drops in this one, a few drops in that one, and we're done. Et combien de gouttes dans chaque tube? Sept gouttes. Seven drops exactly in each tube. Ça a été? Il faisait du mal? Et soi qui? No, <laughs> it didn't hurt him, he says, okay. So he's given some painkillers, he's gonna lie down, and for the next hour, just rest. A lumbar puncture with no anesthetic. Now that needs to be tested. It's going to be centrifuged for 10 minutes. Ça va tourner pendant 10 minutes. Ça va être examiné sur le micro. We're going to look for the parasites themselves. If there are any, are going to be at the bottom of the tube. They've been pushed downwards by centrifugal force. Il n'y a rien. Result. Negative. Good news for Jean-Pierre. He's not a stage two patient, he's a stage one patient, so he still needs treatment, but he won't need to go all the way back to Dingila. It's a long day, and many of the staff have not stopped for food or water. Despite the fatigue, there's one more very important job to do. So what's going on here? So we are burning the, all the medical waste from the whole day of screening, all these people, mm -hmm. to prove that we are not taking anything back with us to the base or to European labs for, I don't know what. Mademoiselle Marie, we are here to see because we, the Congolais, we have a lot of talk. Often, the MSF takes these stories to bring them to Norway, to France, à l'Allemagne, à la Birmanie, je ne sais pas la Tchécoslovaquie, mais aujourd'hui on est convaincu, ça se brûle. On est venu brûler le déchet des histoires des écrans. 90 people came to the screening today, and MSF have found a prevalence of 5.56%. Anything over 1% is considered an epidemic.
After a major epidemic in the 1920s and 30s, sleeping sickness was almost brought under control. But after independence in 1960, screening programs were relaxed and prevalence began to increase to historic proportions, reaching a peak in the 1990s following the cessation of Belgian government aid. That's when MSF and other organizations stepped in. In the first part of the year, this MSF mobile team screened 31,892 people. Two hours on a motorcycle today through the jungle, so let's go. chance to put the helmet down yet. Huh? Merci, merci, Michel. There we go, literally off the bike and straight into the welcome dance, apparently. Huh? Dancing? I think I, I don't quite have the rhythm. So what's going on here is that this is how the health promotion is going to happen today. The chief of the village has been given the right messages by MSF and it's going to be broadcast in the form of dance. So we have to... Oh, Agosh? That's a that's say word. Agosh, OK. <laughs> I've got to get the dance right, otherwise we won't start, huh? Comme ça, non? Avec les... Avec la jambe et les bras. Bon bonjour. Bon décor. Bon décor. Bon décor. Bon décor. Bon décor. Bon how is the registration going? We are 130 people. Already? So far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, it's going well. The agglutination test. Yes. Christian, tu peux le faire ici, en, sans lumière Il y a une torche. Ah, il y a une torche. Ça va, Winston Non. Non, il est encore worried, tu sais. Il était dansé avec moi quand j'ai arrivé. Il se sent tellement bien. Oui, je comprends. Je pense que pour toi, c'est difficile parce que tu te sens bien, en bien santé, n'est-ce pas Pour avoir des, des, des dépistages comme ça avec une ponction. Qu'est-ce que tu penses Moi, j'ai passé la guérison. This is incredible. He's actually going to do this lumbar puncture just with a head torch. <laughs> with the chickens watching. <laughs> Look at that. Okay. Mm. Mm. After an hour of rest, Winston has emerged from the lumbar puncture hut and has tested positive for stage two. Est-ce que vous vous souvenez que ce matin, quand je suis arrivé, vous étiez la première pour pour me prendre à danser? Ça veut dire vous sentez bien, hein, n'est-ce pas? C'est ça. Mais maintenant. Vous êtes, vous êtes euh, diagnostiqué, on peut dire, vous avez la maladie du la sommeil. sommeil. Qu'est-ce que vous pensez sur ça Moi, je pense que la guérison. Oui. Je vais dire un peu guérir. Oui. Mm. Et maintenant, parce que je devais aller pendant dix jours à Dinguila, mm. ça fait loin. Et votre famille qui reste ici, qu'est-ce qu'ils font Qu'est-ce qu'ils feront Non. Il n'y a rien à faire. Il n'y a rien à faire. Ouais. 
Today in Kaibi, MSF screened 297 people. Two were found to be in stage two and will join Christoph and the other Nekpatolia patients for the ride to Dingila. It's 6 a.m. and the first infusions have already begun in the sleeping sickness wing of Dingila Hospital. Bonjour tout le monde. Bonjour. Merci, Dr. Michel. Ça va? Bonjour, Christophe. Ça va? Oui. Comment ça a été la nuit? La nuit. Toujours, toujours mal à la tête. Peut-être ça pourra le, le ponction. Je ne sais pas. Et dis-moi le perfusion. Tu l'as eu déjà? Oui. Oui. Ça a été ce matin? Ce matin. Comment est-ce que est-ce qu'il y avait qu'est-ce qu'il faisait de mal? Non, pas de mal. In 1999, MSF used money from the Nobel Peace Prize to create the Drugs for Neglected Diseases Initiative, or DNDI. In 2009, DNDI delivered a revolution in sleeping sickness treatment, a combination therapy called NECT. Before that, one in 20 people died from the old arsenic-based injection. In practice, it was the first major treatment advance in 60 years. Now, DNDI are gearing up to release a simple oral pill called fexinidazole, which is currently under clinical oui. trial in Dingila. Qu'est-ce que ce sont vos, vos, votre espoir pour l'avenir avec Fexi? Et avec le Fexinidazole, j'espère qu'on va résoudre surtout les problèmes logistiques tellement que la maladie... Donc ça, c'est un bon espoir. Hein? On est hâte. Oui, ouais, ça, c'est le bon espoir avec ça. En tout cas, ça va résoudre beaucoup de problèmes de, de la population, surtout la population pauvre. So actually, on the table here, we have a comparison of the current treatment for sleeping sickness. Quite a heavy box. This is one treatment course of NECT. You've got the tablets you might need for 10 days. And you've got all the heavy infusions you might need for a week. And that needs a lot of logistics and technical expertise. You need a nurse or a doctor to know how to put in an intravenous drip and set up an infusion twice a day, every day for a whole week. It's big, it's heavy, it's technical, and it's cumbersome. And this is Fexi. This is the new drug that's being trialed. This is one whole treatment pack, 10 days of tablets, no technical expertise required, easy to transport. <laughs> I'm in trouble with Jermaine because I just dropped all the Fexi tablets. But it doesn't matter, they're tablets, they're light, they're foil packed, easy. If I dropped all of these on the ground, I think I would have been in a hell of a lot more trouble. In addition to fexinidazole, MSF are about to introduce a new rapid diagnostic test. This is a very quick, light, easy, non-logistical needing rapid test for malaria. You can presume that it'll look something like this. So imagine no need for the first finger prick test to screen, no need for the second blood test to diagnose, and no need for the lumbar puncture to stage. If Fexi works for stage one and two, there's no need to have a lumbar puncture. So, Marie, how do you feel about the declaration and the resolution with the World Health Organization? Do you think it's attainable now, or must we wait for these types of things? Uh, uh, in here, uh, in um, an area like uh, Provence Orientale, especially here in Bawile, where the prevalence is really high, that it's not going to be possible without this uh, new uh, the test and medicine. Mm. Easily diagnose, easily treat, the elimination could be possible. Perhaps not by 2020, but very soon thereafter. Yeah. That's a good thing. Oh, so you're yeah, taking skin cells to go back to their original form uh -huh. and become blood afterwards. It's incredible. 